Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we're going to be looking at section three in the principles of business, CISEC syllabus. We're looking at establishing a business. So, we're going to just run through some of the speci specific objectives, and we are going to explain as we go along. Uh, t this is a relatively long section, so I'm going to divide this video in maybe two or three. Depends on how much content is here to cover. I don't really want to have a running video. All right, so before, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. And the first specific objective asks you to define the term entrepreneur. Define the term entrepreneur, the concept of entrepreneurship. So an entrepreneur is someone who takes the financial risk to start their own business. That's basically simply the simple answer. It's someone who starts their own business, someone who takes the financial risk to start their own business. Here in the textbook, we have enterprise is the ability to organize and manage the production of goods and services. And so it is important factor of production. People who have enterprise and use their skills to organize production are entrepreneurs. So those who organize uh, production, you know, the factors of production, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. So the persons who have the skills, they are called entrepreneurs. And so they are the ones who take the risk to start their own business. They are the people who take the risk and decisions necessary to make business run successfully. So in a nutshell, an entrepreneur is a person who takes the financial risk to start their own business. So that is it for that one. Objective two. Explain the functions of an entrepreneur. Now, this one kind of ties into objective number four, where you describe the roles of the entrepreneur. So, we'll just uh, browse through this one for now and then go more in depth later on. So, explain the functions of an entrepreneur conceptualizing, planning, accessing funds, organizing, operating, and evaluating the performance of a business. So one of the main thing is operating and evaluating the performance of a business. Of course, if you're an entrepreneur, by definition, you should be the one who have, would have started the business, the own and operate a business. So of course, you have to evaluate and monitor what goes on in your business. And so, like I said, we're going to go deeper in it at this juncture, objective four. Objective three, identify the characteristics of the typical entrepreneur. Uh, so before we move on to these, we are going to jump ahead to objective six, where we outline why you might want to start your own business, why you might want to become an entrepreneur. So let's deal with that first. All right, so based on the textbook here again, now let's go to the slides. So the slides, the entrepreneur right there. Anyone who starts a business is an entrepreneur. Many people would like to be an entrepreneur. Some companies can be considered as entrepreneurial. So this is the reasons why you might want to start your own business. One, financial independence. Two, increase income. Three, increase control of work life. Four, self-fulfillment and self-actualization. Those are reasons why you might want to start your own business. So why do people want to start a business? And the first one you have here is the desire for financial independence. What does this mean? This is simply telling us that you as a person, you want to be able to determine basically your finances, your income. So when you start your own business, you can manfully sit down and calculate how much money you might want to make. You are the one who's basically in charge of that instead of having to sit down and wait for a salary or a wage. You are the one who go out and get what you want. You want, if, if, if you want to increase your pay, your salary, then you might up your production level but all that is up to you nobody telling you okay you have to work eight hours a day and to get your monies you are the one who determines okay today i'm going to work six hours because i'm going to make x amount of dollars maybe tomorrow i might work maybe 10 12 hours to try to make meet deadlines to make a certain amount of money so you are basically you start your business to be financially independent don't have to depend on anybody any bosses any government any businesses to pay you you are the one to go out and get your money get your job get your create your your revenue source your income so that's the first one financial independence the next one you have here is self-fulfillment this one is a kind of innate thing a, you know a inside thing so running and owning running and owning a business can be more satisfying and enjoyable than working in a job that is dull and repetitive. 
Rather than being told what to do each day by employers, you can make your own decisions to realize your ambitions. So self-fulfill is from within, it's intrinsic. So you feel fulfilled, you feel satisfied, you, you, you get excited at the idea of running your own business, you know? You're solving the puzzle. How do I figure out this? How do I do this? How do I make more money? How do I beat my competitors? So you get fulfilled by running your own business. And in a similar vein, you have self-actualization. That's running a business that allows you to fulfill your potential and make the best use of your skills, interests, abilities, and ideas. So you want to reach your max potential. You know something, maybe you're working for somebody and you're just there, bored, doing the same thing every day, and you'll be like, ah, oh, this ain't even challenging my brain at all. I need more, more challenge. And so you're not fulfilled, you, know, you, know, you haven't realized your full potential. But then you go and you start your own business just to realize, okay, this is a challenge I'm willing to take. I want to see my skills that I went to university to gather and all the knowledge I've learned over the years. I want to put them to the test and to maximize my potential, maximize my abilities, maximize my skills. So when you do that, you feel more alive, you feel more realized, you feel like you have accomplished something. So that's why you have more self-actualization. And when you look at Maslow's hierarchy, of needs you have self actualization right there to the top of the, that hierarchy of needs then you have to inc of course to increase their income sometimes you're making you're working for somebody and they pay just lousy miserable you know minimum wage you're not getting making ends meet so you know you say you know what i'm gonna start my own business because i, I guarantee i could make more money doing my own thing than to wait here and wait on this nuts change even still if you, even if you're working for somebody you might have a, a side hustle you know you, you 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 run a youtube channel you you know you do some affiliate marketing you do a part-time job you do a little farming on the side something you have a side hustle so even that is another way of increasing your income that's entrepreneurship being entrepreneurial so you want to increase your income because the reality is you cannot really get rich rich from working for somebody you have to take your brand and you develop your brand even you see sports stars making all the money a lot of the money comes from taking their own name turn it into a brand and making a business out of that so to increase your income is the next reason why you might want to start your own business then you have to increase control of their work life to increase control of their work life so you might want to start the business because you know the, the, the eight to five just in your thing that just in your grind uh, if you're working you know the graveyard shift you ain't got no time for that so let's read what they say here unlike most employees as a business owner you can choose when you work where you work and how hard you work so that's the whole thing right there you can control your work life today i feel like working you don't go nobody gonna fire you because you're your own boss you know you want to put in 40 hours 80 hours whatever you want to do that's your thing you're your own boss you ain't want to work from home you know do a little you know telecommuting that's your choice you're the boss so you're in control of your work life nobody telling you what to do nobody telling you to go for lunch 12 1 o'clock no if you feel like going lunch three you do that you feel like going lunch you go for brunch 11 o'clock you do that nobody there to tell you what to do so those are some of the major reasons why you might want to start your own business again what are they you desire financial independence self-fulfillment self-actualization increase your income increase control of your work life so those are some key reasons why you want to start your own business all right so some side some things to note here even in your work control you you're controlling your work life many small business owners have you know if you look at the types of businesses out there you know you have your partnership you have your sole trader those kind of things and you will realize that one of the downsides to being a sole trader is that you can't really just up and take hours away from your business you can't just go vacation and come back when you feel like because for every time you're not in a business you're losing money so even though it's good to have control of your work life sometimes you have to be even more at it than if you had a salary job or something like that you have to work harder the same thing here with financial independence you have to be careful because you know sometimes you don't know where your next money coming from you don't know where your next paycheck coming from based on your business you might have you know seasons you have an up season a down season whereas if you're working for somebody you know you're almost guaranteed you pay every month so it's a little more secure in that way 
But like they say, an entrepreneur, entrepreneur takes risk. That's the risk you take when you go on your own. You might not have a steady supply of income. But when it comes, when it rains, it pours. When you get your real money, you get money. So those are things you have to take into consideration when you're considering, you know, going out on your own and doing your own business. It might be hard. You know, it might be rough. You don't know. But that's a risk you take. And with great risk come greater rewards still. So with that said, let's go back up to specific objective three. Identify the characteristics of the typical entrepreneur. What are the characteristics that make somebody an entrepreneur? You have, they have to be creative, innovative, flexible, goal-oriented, persistent, persevering, and the propensity to take calculated risk. So let's jump into, let's look at a little synopsis of each of them. Some personal traits and leadership qualities of a typical entrepreneur. This is from the textbook. One, creative. A good entrepreneur will have imagination and a vision for their business and be able to turn ideas into reality. So that's clear cut. In a, in, that's clear cut. Now, to be an entrepreneur, you don't want to just go out there and do the same thing everybody else doing. That's boring. I mean, yes, there might be... There might be a, a, a space for you in the market but what you ideally what you want to do is do something that serves gaps in the market things that you see that nobody else is doing so you have to be finding creative ways of doing of solving problems so an entrepreneur is typically a creative person they see something that nobody else is doing and they jump on that so that's what we're talking about there. They have to be creative. Or even, even, even if you're doing something everybody else is doing, you're doing it in a more creative manner that would bring people more to your side of the business. So, you know, for example, you, you know, they always say Apple does things that everybody else is doing because Apple don't invent much. Huh? Apple just takes what's out there and puts a nice creative spin on things. You know, they had the iPad, the tablets were there before. Apple took the iPad and just turned it into something that people like you know most phones had their their what I call it their headphone jacks Apple said no listen to music let's do it another way so you have the, the, the ear pods now let's let's let's, let's marry creative and the second point innovative innovative the ability to invent and develop new ideas and designs for new products, new applications for existing products are new ways of making and selling them. This is vital if business is to stay ahead of competition. So let's go back to Apple. Now those are they are one of the best examples of being innovative. Like I said before, the cell phone was there before Apple. The touch screen was there before Apple. But Apple took it and made it more intuitive and made it more pleasurable to use. So Apple innovated on things that were already existing products that were already there. Headphones were there before Apple. But Apple came and said, we're going to kill the headphone jack. Let's use Bluetooth. And so the earpods were born. And now most phones after the, the, S, the 6S for Apple, they don't have any headphone jacks. Even some high-end phone pe phones decided to go without the headphone jacks. Not my favorite thing, but that's just part of it. So you have to be innovative so the founder of apple he was somewhat you know they, they considered him very innovative even uh the, the bill gates microsoft he was able to look at the personal computer and turn it into something that people cannot do without so innovation creativity they somewhat go hand in hand and these are typical qualities of the entrepreneur you have people like Jeff Bezos who who owns Amazon and you see all the new things Amazon are doing and all the old things they are making even better for example delivery you have Amazon Prime all of a sudden free to the shipping now they're going to one one free one the shipping you know that's a way to you know be ahead of you know Walmart and Best Buy and those kind of places so Innovation is a good thing. Innovation keeps you ahead. So you don't have to in reinvent the wheel in some cases. You just take what's there and make it even better to be ahead of your peep of the competition. So creativity, you have to be creative as, as an entrepreneur and you have to be innovative. The next one is flexible. As an entrepreneur, you have to be flexible. What does this mean? You have to be able to roll with the punches, roll with the changes, be able to bend but not break, to adapt or accommodate new new ventures, new things. Some of the 
famous uh, companies like, you know, Blockbuster and, you know, Polaroid and Kodak. And all those companies who fail to innovate, who are that flexible and fail to innovate. So everything here links, eh? innovation, flexibility. They were unable to, they were not flexible. So they were not able, like a lot of those online stores are just catching up to Amazon. Because they are so big, like your Walmart and those things, they are so big that, you know, they're not able to move with the times. So when people started going more online to shop and stuff like that, they were behind. Jesse Penny and Macy's, they were all behind. They were not flexible. They were too big. They were not flexible. And so they were not able to move with the times. They were not able to change and adapt. Flexibility means you have to adapt to the new times. You see, everybody now, Netflix was one of the first, you know, creative, innovative. You know, you know they were one of the first to do the online streaming thing. Everybody took a while to catch up, but now everybody catching up because, you know, old school cable companies were not flexible. They were very rigid. They don't want to bend. So they see the streaming thing coming on stream. They're like, ah, no, it's not going to last. It's not really good. So they, they didn't jump on board. You know, so they weren't flexible. So flexible is a very important to, to be flexible. And entrepreneurs should be able to deal with changing situations and be prepared for unexpected at all times. So you have to be able to roll with the punches, move with the times, be able to, you know, counteract changing changes in developments in business. Technology is one of the biggest uh, change makers in business. And you realize that a lot of legacy companies had to step up. But now they are the ones who the old are the ones who are behind. For example, in the car space, now Tesla and you know Tesla brought the electric car to to, to the forefront. Now all the old school legacy companies, your Ford and the GM and all those things, are running to make electric cars. Now you have to be flexible. If you're not flexible, if you're not innovative, if you're not creative, you are not going to succeed as an entrepreneur. What else personality trait entrepreneur should have? You have to, of course, be goal oriented. Running a business is about achieving the aims or objectives set by the entrepreneur. Having a target for cost, sales, profit is important as they will guide decision making and operations of the business. You cannot just be going into business blind, blindly. You can't just go in and say, okay, whatever, come and do it, whatever, you know. You have to have goals and objectives so you can, and they have to be measurable. You have to be able to measure your goals and objectives. You can't have some just random goal and objective like, I'm going to be, I'm going to make a million dollars. How? What are you going to do to reach there? What are your steps? What are your objectives? You have set your, your short-term, medium, and long-term goals. You can't just go willy-nilly. So as an entrepreneur, you have to have goals. You have to write down and put down, okay, I'm going to do this at this point in time. This is the time frame to accomplish this, that, or the other. You cannot just be wild and crazy. You have to have goals that you can measure and you can see. And so you have a, you have, and a good entrepreneur is a person who have a lot of goals, set goals, achieve your goals, move on to the next. You also have to be persistent and perseverance. You have to have that persistence and perseverance. What does this mean? Entrepreneurs should not quit when things are not going as planned. The determination to keep pushing to meet targets for your business is very important for success, even if that success is delayed due to unforeseen challenges. No, the world of business is not easy. It's tough out there. You have so many competition out there. So you can't just give up at the first sight of hardship. Most businesses don't make profit in the first year. So if you realize you're making a loss, you're like, oh man, you get deterred. And no, you stick to it. You, you, be, you determine, you persevere, you go through the hardship because at the end of the day, you should have great rewards. Do not give up at the first sight of hardship. It's not an easy job. Some entrepreneurs, when they first started, they do what you call crunch. You work like, you know, 8, 60, almost 100 hours per week. You don't sleep. You know, because it's not an easy road out there. So you have to be persistent and you have to persevere regardless of what's happening if you want to be successful. If you look at the backstory for a lot of these entrepreneurs, they came from nothing. A lot of them came from nothing and they made their way to the top. They started from the bottom, now they're on top. And they went through a lot of, a lot of hurdles. So you have to be persistent and you have to, be perse you have to persevere. And then the last one, the most crucial one, is willingness or propensity to take calculated risk. Like we said, the definition of entrepreneurship is somebody who's willing to take the risk to start their own business. You have to be able to take risk. Not all of us out there are risk takers. Some of us are coward and they want to, we prefer to stay in the, 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 the box of the norm. We are cowards and we want to stay in the norm, in the box. You have to be, you have to be assured. But most 
entrepreneurs now no let's not get this thing twisted about risk eh? we are not talking about foolish risk you see what i say here calculated risk so you have to weigh and measure the risk you're about to take you're not gonna just quit the job without a plan now that's foolish you have to have an idea of what you're gonna do next you can't just up and start the business and you know not seeing doing the market research and stuff like that that's foolishness you have to do your market research make sure that there is a demand for your product that kind of stuff so you have to take a calculated risk like I said some of us are risk averse we are not willing to take risk and you can see it in the daily life some people just want to go up and work for somebody they don't want to take the risk of make of maybe you might not get paid this month because no business not really blooming that kind of stuff so a key trait is that the entrepreneur should be able and willing to take risk so that's it for the uh the traits of an entrepreneur so that's objective three so let's move on to objective four describe the role of the entrepreneur in the decision making process the importance of entrepreneurial organization skills now these are the roles of the entrepreneur example conceptualizing planning accessing finance organizing the factors of production operating the business evaluating and risk bearing these are the roles of the entrepreneur do not confuse roles and characteristics do not have seen this on exams people confuse you ask for name give me one role of the entrepreneur and people give you goal oriented you know no that's a that's a characteristic that's not a, that's not a a, a role i right? so don't get them mixed up so let's look at the roles of the entrepreneur so the textbook have them here nicely laid out the roles are the functions the roles and functions are the same thing so if you say function we're talking about the role and the first one is conceptualizing now that's in your brain you're thinking of an idea you have a vision an idea of what you want the business to be so you have to that's all in your head so that's when you're developing your ideas so you have to go and say hmm what can i do out there that's not being done before what is a good idea for making a business what do i do what can i do what can i offer what is new what is innovative that i can offer that is not being done before so you have an idea so conceptualizing is bringing up a concept that's the root word the concept right there so you have to bring an idea so what the book says developing a business idea or vision and turning it into a working business able to generate sales and profit understanding how the business will deliver what consumers need or want and which consumers will benefit researching all aspects of the business idea including the best sources of finance consumer preferences and buying patterns the most effective place to advertise suppliers who will offer the best value etc so is the idea or is of is bringing the idea in your mind of what business you might want to start that's conceptualizing then you have planning Planning is the gathering the necessary resource and organizing them into an efficient way so that production can flow smoothly and the goals of the company are met. Proper planning can be can guard against business failure. Forecasting is also important for planning for your business ventures. So after you would have had the idea in your head, now you have to plan. You have to plan it or bring it bring pen to paper. So you have the idea. Now let's plan and see how can we bring this idea into fruition what resources do we need in order to get this idea up and running so that's why planning is the second part here let's look at the the slides to see the the way in which businesses are started so you have the concept so conceptualizing then research but we're going to go back we we reach here but we're going to go back to the rules so planning we are planning now so you're planning meaning you're bringing all the resources that you need from the idea to to bring it to fruition because if you don't plan the business would fail that's 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 just how it is you don't plan the business will fail then the next one is the next uh, role is accessing funds of course you are the entrepreneur it's your business you want to start your business of course you need money to run this business so you have to identify okay i have an idea i have all these plans now these plans take money where am i going to get the finance 
to get these plans up and running. So that's the role of the entrepreneur. You have to know where you're going to get the money from. So identifying various sources from which finance can be obtained to start the business. And I did a video on business finance in which you can go to and look at the sources of finance. But they have some listed here. These sources can be personal savings, loans from friends and family, loans from financial institutions, fundraising activities, angel founders, venture capitalists, or grants. So you have to know which is the best avenue to access finance as an entrepreneur. So you have access to finance now. Organizing now. Now, organizing and planning are different. Organizing is when you get the resources and you put them in an efficient manner to work for you, to get the production unit started. So, a next role of the entrepreneur is organizing. So, organizing business resources to get the best product to cons customers should be priority for entrepreneur. All resources should be fully employed to maximize production and achieve business success. So, you're organizing now. So now that you have pulled all resources together, you have access to finance and everything, you've organized them in a nice productive unit, now you actually have to operate the business. That's another role of the entrepreneur, you have to operate the business. So whether it is you hire somebody to do the day to day running, you still have to be there, they have to report to you, and you still have to make important decisions. So, yeah, so this one is self-explanatory, operating the business. You have to make sure the business is running. So for operation of the business, a good management team needs to be hired to undertake the overall supervision of and management of the business. So as an entrepreneur, you have to source your people, your CEO, your managers to run the business for you if you don't want to run it day to day. But you still have to be the one who overlooks the general operation of your business. It's your business. Only you know your best interest. So of course, you have to be the one operating your business as the role of an entrepreneur and of course while the business is operating you have to be checking every so ever so often you have to sit up stand back stand back and say okay are things going how i want them to go so you have to evaluate the performance of your business the performance of your business should be monitored and assessed against targets or plans on a regular basis so that the measures can be taken to correct areas that are underperforming again you have to evaluate your business. Perf are we doing what we're supposed to do? Are we meeting sales expectations? If not, what can I do to change, to change what's going wrong? So you have to monitor and then put and then assess and put corrective measures in place for things that are not going how you planned. So you have to have a keen eye on this. Don't wait until it's too late to say, wait, where my money gone? I'm making a loss every year. What's going on? Don't wait until it's too late. You have to evaluate, assess, make fee and feedback on a regular loop then of course the, the entrepreneur is the one who bears the risk to start their own business so that's a role you have to bear the risk if the business fail that's on you if it succeed all all better but if it fails it's on you so you're bearing the overall risk of running your own business if the business fails to succeed the entrepreneur is solely responsible for the outcome it is therefore important to take all necessary steps to make a profit, especially, of course, you have to be legal, of course, especially if personal savings have been invested in the business and the loan need to be repaid. So you have to bear the risk of all of it, the financial risk. You're the entrepreneur. And last but not least, the good stuff, making a profit, and then, of course, the bad one, managing losses. Now, the factors of production are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, as I've discussed before. And the reward for entrepreneurship is profit. Uh, that's the reward for being an entrepreneur. You make a decent profit. And so everybody, that's the main aim of a business, to make a profit. Or, like I like to, I like to say it this way, the main aim of a business is to maximize the profit. You make profit, yes, but you, have to, you want to maximize, you know? You could make 10, don't make 5. So making a profit is the key aim. Profit is earned when business revenue exceeds costs. Losses occur when the business costs exceed revenue and other business incomes. So, you know, the flip side of profit is loss. And, you know, most businesses do make a loss in the early goings. So that's where perseverance and determination and persistence comes into play. You don't want to just lock up shop when you start making when you make a loss. You're gonna make a loss. Restaurants and stuff. Make, most businesses make a loss up to this date. Tesla and those they make massive losses. Tesla, massive losses every year. People still invest in Tesla, invest in Tesla because they know Tesla has the potential. Face, I mean not Facebook. 
Netflix, massive losses they used to make, but they have to spend the big money to buy the content so that people can come on and subscribe. So that's just how the nature of the business goes. All right, so that's it for the roles of an entrepreneur. Those are the roles of an entrepreneur, conceptualizing, planning, accessing finance, organizing the factors of production, operating the business, and evaluating and risk bearing. So we have covered up to objective four and also six all right so let's look at the outline the rules of entrepreneurial economic okay let's look at the the rules of entrepreneurial in economic development so let's look at section five objective five so specific objective five how the entrep- how enterprise and entrepreneurs support economic development and we have them listed here in the syllabus collaborating providing goods and services to satisfy the citizens, creating jobs, and contributing to the nation building. So let's look at that. Collaborating. Entrepreneurs work with many organizations when they, they create new businesses or expand existing ones, including suppliers of materials and equipment, banks, and recruitment agencies. So yeah, so the entrepreneur is the one who they work with other members of society. They work with other members of the community too enhance overall development you would have heard about you know public private partnerships that's a thing where the public sector the government would collaborate or vice versa would collaborate with the private sector or entrepreneurs or businesses you know to do a number of things you know to you know train staff you know um do workshops you know you may have these small business workshops from the the, we, the government would put on that workshop and they're bringing entrepreneurs to you know collaborate on that workshop things like that so collaborating working together with other stakeholders in community in society to better enhance the economy to develop the country so entrepreneurs may so with many organizations when they create new business so certain business types would work along with other business types to again enhance you know you have your you have your linkages we have discussed linkages before where one business let's say a, a farmer primary primary they would collaborate with secondary you know uh you know a, a agro processor someone who makes certain items like um, tomato that kind of stuff they would work together collaborate to you know help enhance the overall product so collaborating means that members of the private sector collaborating with one another or collaborating with members of the public sector so that's a way in which you can help to develop the overall economy of a given country so that's collaborating working together then you have risk bearing so and as we discussed this already the entrepreneurs are risk takers they invest their time energy and often their money in a business with the aim of creating wealth their risk that they can fail and lose considerable amount of money which is true so how do that help the economy because they are the ones who actually take the risk and start these new businesses they are the ones something the government would not venture in certain areas because they know it is not viable it is not economical for the government to do it so now thank goodness for the entrepreneurs to come in and take the risk to start certain businesses you know in certain economic systems where you don't have any private sectors you realize that your choices your options are severely limited like north korea cuba those places severely limited like how much who which government would have taken the risk to bring in a kfc or subway or Domino's? you know no that's a private thing they take the risk to do that and uh, well maybe fast food is not the best way to say that you enhance the economy because you know I, d- diabetes and obesity but they actually create jobs for people all right so they are the one to take the risk so risk being to take the risk to start these businesses that have an overall sensation of enhancing the economy developing the country some maybe not you know there's some detrimental business out there you know you know, you know alcohol and you know tobacco and liquor and stuff like that they, they, those businesses are not really you know but still jobs are created then you have the obvious one two obvious ones are the last ones the two obvious ones providing goods and services to satisfy citizens and creating jobs of course they help the economy by providing goods and services that that's self-explanatory the entrepreneurs are the ones who risk take the risk to start companies and these companies in turn provide goods and services to satisfy citizens because most of the things that we consume today are products of the private sector 
you know you go to a, a, a supermarket you go to a, sh- a clothing store you go to the bank you go to anywhere you, know, you have your barber that kind of services so they are the ones who create these things they are not done by the government thank goodness imagine if the government was running a barber shop you know everybody got the same haircut or something like that no thank goodness we don't have that so they are the ones imagine the government was the only one to provide food and stuff. you eat egg every day you eat rice every day you don't have the option of you know indulging in some nice treats and stuff like that because government so we the, the the good thing is that the entrepreneurs the private individuals are the ones who provide certain goods and services that satisfy the citizens you say this every day you go down the road you, you partake in them every day you go to a restaurant you go to the bank you go to the movies you know so these are obvious obvious ways in which the entrepreneurs help the development of a country they provide goods and services they also provide competition among themselves which helps us because they are going to bring down prices for look at lime and you know flow and digital thank goodness for competition or else we would have been you know mired with a, a, a monopoly and they just gouging our eyes out every day thank goodness for competition all right creating jobs and next obvious one is creating jobs businesses create jobs enough said because you realize without jobs people can't wouldn't have money you don't have any money you cannot buy anything you cannot survive let's read what the textbook says creating jobs the creation or expansion of business provides employment opportunities both within those businesses and within suppliers these jobs reduce unemployment and provide incomes for employees that can improve their standard of living boost their financial stability these economic opportunities support and enhance communities through increasing quality of life and overall standard of living so creating jobs you get the money the boost the standard of living that's self-explanatory all right and the last one is contributing to nation building in a more direct manner because a lot of firms tend to give back they tend to give back to the communities that they would have taken from so you know you have firms that businesses that give scholarships to to poor students they have you have firms that do workshops without the government telling them to do it you have um firms that would you know do soup kitchens you know they might adopt a certain green space you know plant trees stuff like that so you know what i'm talking about they contribute to nation building by giving back business creation and expansion support economic social and political integration and development within a country in following ways collaborating and trading with other local regional and, and national organizations provided incomes and employment which helps to reduce the levels of poverty and crime so that's a very um, obvious answer contributing to nation building so all those are ways in which the entrepreneurs and businesses will contribute to you know the economy economic development and stuff like that all right so that would be specific objective number five so the last one we're gonna look at here is outline the essential steps that should be taken to est- in establishing a business we don't want to get a video too long so we're going to jump in, into this one and then we are going to break and then come back with a new video for the other half of section um, three all right so let's go let's look at it now the slides have them nicely lined out here in a nice flow chart establishing in the business from concept research resource feasibility study business plan funds operation so but also the textbook has them laid out nicely and that's where we're going to pull most of it from so establishing a business essential steps starting up your own business can be difficult but careful planning and reduce can reduce some of the challenges before you start the business the following steps should be taken the first one we looked at before conceptualization we looked at conceptualizing before it involves developing the business idea or concept when you have a business idea it is essential to ask questions like who is the business idea aimed at and how will it be delivered to the consumers is it feasible and will it generate an income so conceptualization so you have to run back your business idea in your head and see if it actually could work so you have the you have the idea so concept again is about the idea you have to develop the idea for you have to flush out your business idea conceptualizing when you put it on paper you know this is my idea and you know you write on will it work you know that kind of stuff like that so conceptualization is where you envision your business idea 
and how you see it, how you project it, how you, you, you look at the future, how is, if, it, if it comes to fruition, how is it going to be? So the conceptualization is where you take the idea and try to, you know, make your idea more viable. So that's the first step. You have to have an idea. That goes without saying. You can't just up and start the business. You have to have an idea, and that's where conceptualization comes into play. Then, of course, you have your idea. Now, is my idea feasible? Can it work? And so, therefore, that's where your research comes into play. Okay? Research or and the market probe. So, your market research comes into play here. Is my idea viable? So, after the idea has been conceptualized, you should do some market research to find the characteristics of the customers, of the consumers in your target market, the product features they want, and the price they are willing and able to pay. So, in a nutshell, you have to do market research. Now, I've seen many businesses just open and close because they assume people want their goods, they assume people want their product, they assume how they're delivering is the best way, and they end up failing. You have to do your market research to know if your idea is feasible or not, if it's going to work or not. I mean, it doesn't make sense to open, let's say, a luxury care dealership in a small country. Like, what audience, what customer base are you going to target with that? You have to be able to do your market research or your market probe to know if your idea is viable. Some people call it a viability study. You have to know if your idea is viable. So you have to do your market research. Then, of course, after you would have done your market research, that would help you to identify your resources. You know, your human material and the financial resources so you have to identify resources starting and running a business needs resources you must identify the resources you will need to include material machinery equipment all those things that you need to on the premises the people with the right skills and expertise you will also need the financial resource to buy or hire these resources. so you need to identify okay idea my market research proved that okay this idea is viable so no where am I going to get these resources? Where am I going to get the money? Where am I going to get the people? Where am I going to get the resources, the, the materials? You have to identify where you're going to get them before you can set up your business. You can't just start a business and then like, oh, ma'am, I need somebody to do this. Oh, wow, I need somebody to do this. Oh, ma'am, I need this car. I need this machinery. So, no, you have to identify them first before you can even go further. Then you have the creation of a business plan. So let's see what a business plan is. We're going to look at a business plan later on in the next video because it's going to take a while to digest. So you should have a plan for how the business idea will be implemented. A business plan is a well-researched and detailed statement about the business proposal. It will include the aims or objects of the business, a detailed production description, an assessment of the market potential, detailed resource requirements, and sales and financial projections. Business plan helps an entrepreneur to turn a business idea into working business capable of earning revenue and returning a profit so again we're going to look at a business plan later we're going to look at the sections and look at them individually so we're going to just read it for now and then look at it later then of course you have done a business plan and you need your business plan in order to actually get your your, your, your funding because no bank can lend you a business loan without a business plan that's why you have steps here that's why this thing comes in steps so resources identify feasibility study then that would be a part that's something similar to your market research and then you have your plan now you have to access funds you will need to you need money to start and run the business in order to buy or hire resources for your business if your personal savings are not sufficient then you may have to borrow money from family friends bank wherever so you have to go and get the money you can get them from angel investors, capital, I mean venture capitalists. Those are people who come in and give you the money to start the business and you pay them back after. Or they take, a she take shares, early shares in the business. All right, so you have to acquire or get your funds. Then after you would have gotten your funds, of course, you can now open and operate your business. All right, Equipment, staffing, production, marketing. So you can now operate your business, you get your equipment with the monies, you get your hire your people because you have the monies now, start production because you have your seed money, and you have to run your marketing because you have your marketing budget in place. So a good business plan will include a detailed operational plan or roadmap for setting up and running the business. It will include details of how business resources and processes will be organized, including the production process, 
quality control, consumer services, purchasing and payments, systems, stock controls, and much more. So now you have done all this, it's time to run your business. So again, the steps in establishing the business, concept, a business concept or idea, conceptualization. Then you, do, you research that idea, you do a market research, market probe to see if your idea, your concept it can actually come true. You identify resources that your idea would need to get off the ground, you know, the human resource, material, financial. Then you do a feasibility study, which means you do a research to see just how feasible or can the business survive? Can it actually work? Is it possible? So you do a study to see if it actually can be done. If, that's, if that turns out to be positive, then you have to prepare a business plan, which we're going to go into later. Based on the plan, you can now obtain funds from banks, friends, families, investors, and you take those funds now to open your business and you begin operation by buying equipment, hiring people, starting production, running the marketing campaign. All right? So that is it for now. We are going to study it for now. We're running along already. We're going to just jump into section eight and move forward next video so of course you know what to do you know what to do this is the time you like subscribe and hit the notification bell to know when i drop part two of establishing a business here and learn skin all right so i hope you enjoy this one and help you in your upcoming exams all right thanks for listening